I'm Gordon Buchanan, a wildlife cameraman. I filmed animals for 25 years, including some of the world's most dangerous. But what's it like to live alongside fierce predators? And raise your children with deadly neighbours. So this bird has caught wolves before. To find out, I'm going to live with three tribal families. What was expecting? They'll show me these creatures from a new perspective. Getting me closer to these animals than I've ever been before. In the Solomon Islands, I saw if it's possible to live with sharks. It is spooky as hell down there. In Mongolia, I bonded with the golden eagle. She's not a rifle or a shotgun, but she's every bit as lethal. And in Ethiopia, I learned to walk with Africa's hyenas. Spending time with these people will be a life-changing experience. Transforming my understanding of the animals we fear most. It's home to over 80 different ethnic groups. It has to be one of the most culturally diverse places on the planet. I'm here because of the relationship that people of this country have with perhaps one of the world's least popular animals. A top predator that is not revered, but a top predator that is reviled. The people of Ethiopia have a very curious relationship with hyenas. There are said to be more hyenas here than anywhere else, making Ethiopia the hyena capital of the world. Its spectacular landscapes contain tens of thousands of hyenas, but there are also reports of these creatures invading Ethiopia's major cities. Of all predators, hyenas send a shiver down my spine. I'm going to travel across Ethiopia to find out how people survive alongside these formidable carnivores. I'm starting my journey in the capital, Addis Ababa. By day, it bustles with nearly four million people. But at night, I've heard that hyenas prowl the streets, looking for food. I'm meeting Girum Henok, a local hyena expert. You must be Girum. Yes. And nice to meet you. I'm Gordon. Nice to meet you. How are you? Yeah, good. It's a busy place to meet. Very, very busy. Let's go. It's always like this. Always like this. Market is like this. Yes. Giram's taking me to Bella, on the edge of the city, one of Addis's most notorious hyena haunts. Of the three species of hyena, spotted hyenas are the biggest. They're neither dogs nor cats. Their nearest relative is actually the mongoose. But they're far more deadly. Weighing up to 90 kilos, they have one of the strongest bites of any animal. They take on prey as large as wildebeest. They can even kill lions. It's not surprising people fear and distrust these powerful creatures. With a chance I'll meet one on foot, it's time for a pep talk. So in an hour from now, it's going to be night time, it's going to be dark. There's a, there's a good chance, high chance, I could bump into hyenas just walking down this road. Face to face. I mean, if you meet a hyena face to face on the road. So how do, how do I stay safe? How do I not get eaten? What you should have to do is face to face. Never to show your back. If you run, that will be your last. He will attack you, definitely. And never to show him you are in fear. You have to be smart. 
and strong in front of you. Just confidence and vigilance and don't, <laughs> don't show your fear. Well, don't, don't be scared. Be scared. Yes. Okay. It's easier said than done, I think. Night in Addis falls suddenly, around six. You can still hear a lot of the hustle and bustle that's going on. People wandering about, there's still animals, you can still hear kids. But this is when everyone starts to go to bed, and it's, it's quite disconcerting, the fact that these streets, once they sort of, have become quieter, that's when the hyenas will, will come out. I've been told hyenas come here to scavenge and hunt, taking dogs, donkeys, and even people. The only thing that's reassuring is the sound blaring out of the Orthodox Christian Church. The people that live here are devout, they have their God, but they also believe in the devil. Guru's just told me something that is intriguing, and that is that people here believe that hyenas ward away the devil, they keep the devil out. That is, that's fascinating. The relationship people here have with hyenas is complex. As we enter a stand of trees, I'm feeling increasingly uneasy. You still, you still feel that we're safe here? Yes. Then a sound comes out of the darkness. It's a hyena. In the past when I've heard, I've always associated it with the, the dead at night. It just comes out of nowhere. Look, look, look. Look, when you move straight, there he comes. Oh, yeah, yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. Wow. There you go. It's amazing to see that hyena. I've seen hyenas before, but I've never been on foot with them. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful. Sometimes there are... He's coming, coming on this side, side now. Could you hear him? Yeah. It does give me creeps a little bit that they can move quite silently through the, through the trees and one can sneak up on you wherever it's intent and you wouldn't know it's, it was there. Over there. You see, he's not gone. He's over there, watching for us. He don't go. Yeah. Seeing how stealthy they are has unnerved me. I'm fundamentally scared of, of hyenas. I feel like I have nothing to protect myself um, against them. Despite this, it is thrilling to see hyenas right on the edge of Addis. The hyenas melt away through the trees and into the night. It's intriguing that people tolerate such a powerful predator so close to a city. But I'd also like to learn about them in the wild. For now, I'm leaving these urban hyenas behind. I'm on my way to the remotest part of Ethiopia. The South Omo Valley is home to many extraordinary peoples. One of the least known are the Bodhi. Their cattle herding culture stretches back thousands of years. And they live with their cattle in prime hyena country. Just about every negative character trait you could come up with, we've attributed to the hyena. They're dirty, they're smelly, they're scavengers, they're not to be trusted. What I want to do is try and unravel the truth about these animals, and I want to do that by spending the next two weeks with the people that should know them best, people that have coexisted somehow with these predators for as long back in time as they were both here. A little group of people sitting under the tree, I presume that's my uh, welcoming party. Hello. The Bodhi number around 8,000 people. 
They're famous for their distinctive hairstyles and decorative body scars. I'm Gordon. Hey, Bunny. Nice to meet you. I'm Gordon. Come to meet the people. Baradi is a spiritual leader and elder. As the owner of many cattle, he's had his share of run-ins with hyenas. I'm keen to find out what he and his people think of them. You don't seem to like hyenas. I don't know how to respond. It's troubling to hear how seriously these people suffer from hyena attacks. While I'm here, I'm going to be staying with Bibani. She's offered to teach me how the body survive in this hostile environment. On our way to her village, we make a detour. Bivani has four children and 45 cattle to look after. He's okay, he's okay, he's okay. Bivani says the rains have just started. In Bodhi country, this is the peak period for hyena attacks. So I hear them tonight. This is the call I heard in Addis, the rallying cry for the hyena clan. They're clearly living nearby. An hour's walk from the river, we get to Bibani's village. With a couple of dozen thatched huts, it's home to around 80 people and their livestock. I was wondering what they were doing. I thought they were running like hyenas, and that would be too much of a coincidence, but that is exactly what they are doing. Without a doubt, this is a very wild part of Africa. And for these kids, that size, you know, this is not a place where you want to be wandering free, certainly on your own. That's impressive, that's good. Good hyena action. Baradi is an authority on all things Bodhi. He's offered to take me to the hyena's lair, their den. The Bodhi usually visit dens if they want to destroy them. But Baradi's agreed just to show me what one looks like. Two hours walk from the village, we come to a densely forested area. Baradi's tracking skills lead us to some paw prints. You can see that in front of them here, behind the doors. There's another one here. But it's walking in this direction. As we make our way in, I wonder what would happen if we bumped into a hyena. On my hands and knees here. Okay, you might be able to stand up a bit. Baradi thinks this den is used by a clan of around 15 hyenas. At this time of day, some of them could be resting underground. Just way too thick. 
The Bodhi mostly destroy Danes in reprisal for attacks. Today, they're leaving them be. They seem to almost respect their enemy. Perhaps this is why hyenas still survive here. In other parts of the world, people have wiped out hyenas. But where they still persist, they're tough, resilient, and adaptable. Spotted hyenas live in clans dominated by large, aggressive females. Their powerful jaws can crack even the biggest bones of their prey, allowing them to get a nutritious marrow. The resulting rich milk allows her cubs to develop their own bone-crunching teeth and jaws. In Bodhi country, cattle have replaced much of the local wildlife. So hyenas have little choice but to prey on livestock. At dusk, the cattle come in. Babani's sons have been guarding them all day. But at night, when hyenas are most likely to attack, they need the protection of the corral. This your house? Mm. I like, I like it. it. Babani will sleep inside her house, but with her livestock within earshot. The bunny picks out a cow skin, my bed for the night. Very nice. Ah, oh, it matches my hair. In Bodhi culture, taking a stranger by the hand is normal. The bunny takes me to the center of the village, where the men lie out all night on hyena watch. Thank you, Bobana. My bed for the night. Yeah, great. It's worrying to sleep out in the open. Quite a lot of noise. Not exactly quiet. Um, my bed fell off here. We're getting on just fine. I think we'll be very happy together. It's nine o'clock at night. So that was the time that Babani said that Highness might come from the road. Next morning, the villagers are up at dawn. It sounds like a mess some hyena activity overnight, as Babani's daughter, Rigna, explains. There were hyena close to the village last night. Shin fled in here, a thing. Here. All her cows are safe. But Babani isn't happy. I offer to help reinforce her thorn fence. Baradi's daughter, Choma, comes along to make sure I do a good job. Lower this side. Hyenas are highly intelligent. They'll exploit any weak spots. I'm hoping Babani will approve too. With the compound secure, 
the bunny seems more relaxed. But it seems she still thinks I've got a lot to learn. She's giving me a new and unexpected responsibility. Why is this one got a rope on it? Really, this one? I like it, thank you. Having my own bullet to look after is a huge honour. <laughs> this body naming ritual starts with milk being spat all over my face. I share the name with the, the cow. I'm no longer Gordon Island. Onyabasa. With the ceremony over, I'm told to bond with my bullock, as the body do. That's still, still warm. The body rubbed their favourite cows and bulls with fresh dung as decoration. Yeah? It's a good... Ash works like a sunscreen and prevents infection from cuts and grazes. The biggest, most important role for me is to keep this bullock safe from hyenas. I'm realising that I'm up against quite an adversary. The hyenas, I've seen them in action before, and as strong as Onyamasa is, he's no match for a, for a hyena. They are yeah, incredibly strong, they're persistent, they're tenacious, and they know what they're after. In an area like this, this is just, this is perfect. A little cow like this, that's their dinner. We may now share the same name, but I've got a lot to learn if I'm going to keep on your bus safe. I'm still my cow. With a bullock of my own to look after, I'm keen to hear from Baradi and Elder Morgero just what hyenas are capable of. <laughs> that song sort of it's a nod towards the behavior of a of a hyena. They can go here, they can go there, they can take and take and take. Hyena and body have been enemies for a long time. Do you think that's going to be the same into the, the future? It's interesting to hear back that the time before the body raised cattle, hyenas and people were, were friends. Um, and that's true of hunter-gatherer societies in the past, hunter-gatherer societies that exist now. They can coexist with big predators because there's no real conflict. The conflict only really comes is when we start animal husbandry, when we start keeping animals, the types of animals that predators will, will, will go for. That's how this, this story that's still playing out today, that's when, that's when it really started. The body's war with hyenas looks set to run and run. Morgera's stories help to dispel their reputation as scavengers. 70% of hyenas' food comes from kills they make themselves. When it comes to hunting, hyenas are more successful than lions. An adult can bring down prey over three times its size and travel up to 80 kilometers a day in search of food. Hyenas attack large animals by biting their vulnerable underbelly. A cow has little chance against a predator like this.
That's what we've been waiting for, waiting for the coast to come home. It's just central, central to this way of life. life. Cattle, Cattle are everything. Cattle are the Bodhi's only wealth, used as payment in marriage and as collateral for loans. Everything that comes out of a cow finds a use. Got a calf, fairly small calf, so I think this is the one we're going to milk. Or we can wash our hands. Cow's urine has antibacterial properties, so it makes sense to use it for washing where water is so scarce. But every time I get close, the, the cow is getting a bit spooked and moving away. Is that part of the um, sort of soothing the calming process, just rubbing its bum? I get the um, get rubbing its side. That's sort of quite that's quite a soothing. That's how I'd soothe the cow. I think kind of rubbing its bum must be specific bum hole. Um, I'm surprised. Bibani takes a handful of milk for an important ritual. Good lad, thank you. One. Her superstition reminds me that for the Bodhi, hyenas are a threat, not just to their cattle but to their way of life. Looks like I've made a mistake. I should have got a two-man cow skin. I'm back on guard duty. This time, I'm determined to stay awake. Ten past midnight. I haven't heard anything. Resembles the hyena. But the weather has other plans. Oh, I just found the first spot of rain. Uh, my path might blow over. But um, if it does actually rain properly, I'm going to have to seek shelter inside. Okay. Time to find shelter. Assisted by my. My companion. He's not naked, by the way. As I abandon my watch, I hope the hyenas stay away. Next morning, there's bad news. Burari's taken me to a village where we've got a report that a cow had been attacked by a hyena. On the edge of the village, we see evidence of hyena kills. Around here, there's bones strewn all over the place. Hey, look at this. If that's been split, open. There's a hyena that would do that. This one bite can burst that open, you can get to the marrow inside. <laughs> it's not even strong enough to stand up. What a shame. That's rock solid. So there's infection in, in there. Just because this cow managed to escape from the hyenas, it doesn't mean to say that it's going to, it's going to live. Hmm. It's tragic to see firsthand the suffering hyenas can cause. Though you don't see them every day, you might not hear them, but they're always there. The threat is always out there. And attacks from hyenas will, will always continue. And trying to see it from both sides, from the hyena's side, from the people's side. But at the moment, I'm definitely on this side of the, 
the thorn of fence and with the cattle and with the people. Despite the brutality of the attack, I'm still impressed by the hyena's tenacity. The body are keen to show me how they take revenge. It seems to be a bit of a path coming through here, just as he's leading up from the, the river. If I was looking for any animal, if I was looking for a hyena, this is where I'd, where I'd start. With an automatic rifle, Baradi sets to work. Then he comes Oh God. Go <laughs> As a form of retaliation, it's shocking. There's a stick going through the trigger mechanism. Okay, you do, I don't want to do it. You do it. The gun's, the gun's just suspended in the branches, branches. So, so when the hyena, hyena comes, comes, goes for the meat, pulls it, this it just pulls the, pulls pull the whole gun, gun forward, forward, pushing the trigger, trigger back, back, and um, um, it'll be, be shot. shot. No, no, I no, no, I haven't seen this. this. I can't I judge at all. I don't, um, I don't blame him. These men for feeling this this way. I don't blame them for wanting to kill hyenas, giving the hyenas and trying to kill their their cattle. See, the hyenas came looking for trouble, and they're, they're going to find trouble themselves right here. The men camouflage the gun to increase the chance of success. One saving grace is that. If it goes for it, it, it won't know anything about it. It'd be dead instantly. Baradi wants me to witness the body's most important ceremony, the Ka'el ritual. Each year during the rainy season, the body let blood from the necks of their beloved cows. Amazingly, it doesn't seem to hurt them. It's remarkable how little it seems to affect the cows. This is something they'll be used to. Now go on, man. Now, Mary, I keep. Keep it like that. I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on. It's quite, it's quite congealed. So he's going to drink the whole thing. This binging on blood continues for three months as men race to pile on the pounds. Communities gather in a unique competition at which Bodhi women can assess potential husbands. The fattest and best dancers are considered the most eligible. Now, it's my turn to try. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's actually very nice. I have a bit more. I need, I need to be, be I need to be strong. strong. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually um, genuinely a strong, strong, strong flavour, but sort of warm and pretty delicious. Baradi smears ash on my face to clean it. <laughs> I don't want to be any fatter. I want to be stronger. Don't don't make any get that. Don't get that. Don't don't make any get that. Don't get that. Don't get that. Don't get that. Where we come from, we have cows. We keep them for their beef. We keep them for their their milk. Morally, there's um, you know it's better to take the blood from them than killing an entire animal. It's just that in our culture, it's something it's it's kind of weird and it's peculiar, but it actually makes complete sense. It's, it's sustainable. That's good for you. Can't quite believe that my time here is about to end. During my time with the Bodhi, I've learned how resourceful and clever hyenas are. I've also been surprised by how the Bodhi feel about their enemy. 
the big step in my learning is that the people that actually do live alongside hyenas maybe do know them best. Not once has there been any mention of those pretty unpleasant things that people say about hyenas. There just seems to be a little bit of respect for them. You have to have a lot of respect for an animal that can outsmart a human being. It's time, it's time to, to say, say goodbye, goodbye to Onyabasa. Thank you. Like the Bodhi, I'm smearing myself with the dung of my favorite bull. I hope he and the Bodhi's other cattle can stay safe from the hyenas. This is maybe the last time I'll ever have a chance to witness this way of life. Because it's very precious. I didn't realize that genuinely people live like this anymore. Maybe just the nobility of, of the people. That's what, that's what I'll take away. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Now, I'm traveling to Harar, a city with the most radical view of hyenas anywhere in the world. Harar is a medieval walled city with a remarkable tradition. Here, people have lived alongside hyenas for centuries. I've heard it's home to hundreds of them. As a rule, if you want to find wild animals, you go to a wild place. And the Omo Valley, from where I've just come, is one of the wildest places I've ever been. And it's strange and frustrating to have spent time in a place where not an hour goes by that people aren't talking about hyenas. They come up all of the time. They, kind of, they take a big part of, of life there, but I've left without seeing one. So to increase my chances of actually meeting the monster face to face, I've come to the most unlikely of places. In contrast to Addis Ababa, the people of Harar don't just put up with hyenas. I've heard they're actively encouraged. Apparently one of the best places to find them is the graveyard. If anyone should know, the grave digger should. Is that your dog? <laughs> Yahuwah Lasset has been digging graves here for 10 years. And so what are, they, what are the hyenas doing in the graveyard? So do you think I need to be afraid of, of them if I'm wanting to see them? At nine o'clock, I returned to the graveyard. I thought the forest on the edge of Addis Ababa was creepy, but this is a whole new level. I've set up a thermal camera to try to film the hyenas. It soon reveals tantalizing glimpses. This is the closest I've been to hyenas on this trip. But I can't see through the undergrowth. Against Yehulis' advice, I'm going to walk in. I'm taking a small night vision camera and a head torch. The crew stay behind on a thermal camera to keep an eye on me. Hey. 
is the most unlikely place I've ever looked for a wild animal. Very weird. With the sound of church prayers drifting up from the city, it's hard to get my bearings. There's a bit of a path here. I don't want to follow that, but it doesn't look like a human path. Okay. And then, at the end of the path, I mean, I mean, not, not just, just one, one hyena. Oh my god. There's a whole gang of them, just, just meters, meters away. In a, In a clearing between, between the gravestones, gravestones they're, they're feasting, feasting on something. Skull. Maybe they aren't robbing graves. But they are looking increasingly bold. It's time for me to go. Where the hell am I? Found the hyenas of Harar, and the stories of them being grave robbers seem to be an urban myth. But I'm left wondering why there are so many here. Next morning, I want to discover more about Harar's hyenas. meeting a man at the heart of this city's hyena culture, Yusuf Saleh from the Oromia tribe. Hello. Hello. Hello, Yusuf. I'm Gordon. I'm Gordon. I'm Gordon. Oh, my goodness. Look, 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 look at this. Hello there. I was not expecting that. You come to meet a man talk about hyenas, not, not expecting expect to actually meet one, one, one in the flesh. Now my people, uh, I got too many. By God, you can be Yusuf is rehabilitating this orphaned hyena cub. So tell me about your relationship with, with hyenas. When did that start? Yusuf's father started feeding wild hyenas as a way to prevent them from preying on his livestock. Other people were feeding them too. It's now become a city tradition. I want to know if Yusuf thinks people are at risk from hyenas here. Yusuf 
والبراري بقى اقمع المانقيات كلها على اساسهم Yusuf's affection for hyenas is deeply moving. I'm inspired by his ease around them. Yusuf's family continue the tradition to this day. Every night outside the city walls, Yusuf's son Abbas feeds wild hyenas. Visitors flock to see it. It's an opportunity for me to learn how to build trust with these predators. Unlike Yusuf's rescue hyena cub, these ones are fully grown. And just counted 12. And in the middle of the 12, 12 hyenas is one man. This sound, this is bizarre. He's given each animal a name. It's like a kind of street cat. It's a really surprising view of a, of a hyena. Abbas says they sense my fear. He wants me to sit down. I think getting down on their level is something that makes me even more nervous. Very aware that my toes in these sandals look like sausages. Hello. God almighty. of this size, you realize how, how big they are, how powerful they are. Abbas whistles to them all the time, and they seem to understand him perfectly. Their famous laugh is more about food than fun, expressing submissiveness at mealtimes. But obviously, Highly adaptable, adaptable. and supposed to become, become accustomed, accustomed to, to, to human beings. You've, You've got, got to be adaptable. adaptable. And I think that maybe says a lot about them as, a, as an animal, because not every big predator is, is, is like that. People say that hyenas are, are cowardly. No cowardly animal would, would do this. I think it shows quite an extraordinary amount of bravery to kind of overcome their natural fears of, of human beings. This incredible encounter is showing me the other face of the killer. I'm learning from Abbas that treated with kindness is possible to form a trusting relationship with hyenas. Having discovered they have a softer, sensitive side, I want to see if I can truly get to know the graveyard hyenas. Will whistling work for me? At first, they're timid. But a few bones have been given draw them out. Yusuf told me this is how his family has gained their trust. I'm astonished to see how quickly they learn I'm not there to harm them. You can hear the way it's crunching on those bones. It's like it was a, a crisp. See the way that both of them are looking every single move that I make, they're hyper aware. You're quite shy. There's one just, just, I was going to say skulking, skulking but, but it's not skulking at all. Skulking, skulking is one of those words that we just apply to hyenas. They don't skulk. They're very timid creatures. They're actually an incredibly beautiful animal.
two nights ago, I was surrounded by these very hyenas and terrified. But now I've got over my fear and I'm completely comfortable with them. Then I get a glimpse of a cub. It can't be more than a few months old. They must have a den here. It's quite an irony that I found these hyenas amongst the gravestones. These hyenas aren't here to feast on the deceased. They live here. This graveyard is their home. This is kind of only peace and quiet they can find in this busy city in which they live. My trip to Arar has shown me that people and hyenas can live together in peace. I would love to know what my body frames would make of this. Now, I've got a chance to explore that. I sent word to the village, and Paradi and his daughter Choma are coming to join me. They've heard about Harar, and are curious to know what the hyenas here are like. This is the first time the Bodhi will have ever been face to face with potentially friendly hyenas. I think this. What is this? Have you ever seen a hyena as close as this before? <laughs> Where you come from, people and hyenas are enemies. But here, some people in Harar say that hyenas are their friends. What do you think, Joma? Are you, are you afraid? <laughs> I think they're beautiful. They've got quite a round head and their eyes, nice and dark, big ears. Just like a baby. <laughs> I, I, I think, think we'll have, have to agree to disagree. To disagree. <laughs> Even if we can't agree on its looks, I get a sense that Baradi and Choma are mellowing. Baradi's changing view of this lifelong enemy is surprising. <laughs> if the circumstances were right, perhaps even the Bodhi could forge a new relationship with the hyenas. My time in Ethiopia is over. The people of this incredible country have a lesson perhaps for the entire world. They've shown me there's much more to hyenas than meets the eye. Humans can live alongside the creatures we fear. If only we take the time to understand them. I always say we should be open-minded. I think in the case of the hyena, we're everything but open-minded. We're opinionated. We jump to, to conclusions. We've, we've made up a lot of things about I know. Almost the more time I spend with them, the more I find out about them, the more fascinated by them I become. They're definitely strange, they're unusual, but that doesn't make them bad, it certainly doesn't make them evil. They're not dirty, smelly, they're not scavengers out to ruin people's lives, they're not grave-robbing maniacs. 
maybe a perfect example of not judging anything or anyone by reputation. Faraday wants, wants me to witness, witness the body's most, most important ceremony, ceremony the Ka'el ritual. ritual. Each, Each year during the rainy season, the body let, let blood, blood from the necks of their beloved cows. cows. Amazingly, Amazingly, it doesn't, doesn't seem to hurt them. Boy, it's remarkable how little it seems to affect the cows. This is something they'll be used to. Now go on, man, I'm very happy. It's quite, it's quite congealed. So he's, he's going to drink, drink the whole, whole thing. thing. This, this binging, binging on blood continues for three months as men race, race to pile on the pounds. Communities gather in a unique competition at which Bodhi women can assess potential husbands. The fattest and best dancers are concerned. <laughs> I offer to help reinforce her thorn fence. Baradi's daughter, Choma, comes along to make sure I do a good job. Lower this side. Hyenas are highly intelligent. They'll exploit any weak spots. Yeah. I'm hoping Babani will approve too. It's good. With the compound secure, the Banal city with a remarkable tradition. Here, people have lived alongside hyenas for centuries. I've heard it's home to hundreds of them. As a rule, if you want to find wild animals, you go to a wild place. And the Omo Valley, from where I've just come, is one of the wildest places I've ever been. And it's strange and frustrating to have spent time in a place where not an hour goes by that people aren't talking about hyenas. They come up all of the time. They kind of they take a big part of, of life there, but I've left without seeing one. So to increase my chances of actually meeting the monster face to face, I've come to the most unlikely of places. In contrast to Addis Ababa, the people of Harar don't just put up with hyenas. I've heard they're actively encouraged, as are the biggest. They're neither dogs nor cats. Their nearest relative is actually the mongoose. But they're far more deadly. Weighing up to 90 kilos, they have one of the strongest bites of any animal. They take on prey as large as wildebeest. They can even kill lions. It's not surprising people fear and distrust these powerful creatures. With a chance I'll meet one on foot, it's time for a pep talk. So in an hour from now, it's going to be night time, it's going to be dark. There's a, there's a good chance, high chance, I could bump into hyenas just walking down this road. I mean, if you meet a hyena face to face on the road. So how do, 
How do I stay safe? How do I not get eaten? What you should have to do is first view. Never to shock your back. If you run, that will be your last. He will attack you, definitely. And never to show him you are in fear. Night in Addis falls suddenly, around six. You can still hear a lot of the hustle and bustle that's going on. People wandering about, there's still animals, you can still hear kids. But this is when everyone starts to, to go to bed, and it's, it's quite disconcerting, the fact that these streets, once sort of... Once it become quieter, that's when the hyenas will, will come out. I've been told hyenas come here to scavenge and hunt, taking dogs, donkeys, and even people. Only thing that's reassuring is the sound blaring out of the Orthodox Christian Church. The people that live here are devout. They have their God, but they also believe in the devil. Guru's just told me something that is intriguing, and that is that people here believe that Hyenas ward away the devil. They keep the devil out. That is, that's fascinating. The relationship people here have with hyenas is complex. As close to the village last night, Shinfle didn't hear a thing. All her cows are safe. But Bibani isn't happy. I offer to help reinforce her thorn fence. <laughs> Baradi's daughter, Choma, comes along to make sure I do a good job. Lower this side. Hyenas are highly intelligent. They'll exploit any weak spots. I'm hoping Babani will approve too. <laughs> Oh my, oh my goodness. goodness, look, 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 look at this. Hello there. I was not expecting that. <laughs> you come to meet a man to talk about hyenas. Not expecting to actually meet one in the flesh. Yusuf is rehabilitating this orphaned hyena cub. So tell, tell me about, about your, your relationship, relationship with, with, with hyenas. hyenas. When, when did, did that start? Tura, amata di dem sodoma awunige. Ada sa ubudura kumati nyaki su ture. Yusuf's father started feeding wild hyenas as a way to prevent them from preying on his livestock. Other people were feeding them too. It's now become a city tradition. Ada sa. I want to know if Yusuf thinks people are at risk from hyenas here. And um, they'd be shot. No, no, I haven't seen this. I can't. Judge at all. I don't. Um, I don't blame these men for feeling this this way. I don't blame them for wanting to kill hyenas. Given the hyenas are trying to kill their their cattle, the hyenas came looking for trouble, and they're, they're going to find trouble themselves right here. The men camouflage the gun to increase the chance of success. One saving grace is that. If it goes for it, it, it won't know anything about it. It'd be dead instantly. Baradi wants me to witness the Bodhi's most important ceremony, the Ka'el ritual. Each year during the rainy season, the Bodhi let blood from the necks of their beloved cows. Amazingly, 
It doesn't seem to hurt. Roy. It's remarkable how little it seems to affect the coach. This is something they'll be used to. Now go on, man. I'm very happy. Tip it again. I'll learn when we go on. Do I? It's quite, it's quite congealed. So he's, he's going to drink, drink the whole thing. thing. This binging on blood continues for three months as men race to pile on the pounds. Communities gather in a unique competition at which Bodhi women can assess potential husbands. The fattest and best dancers are considered the most eligible. Now, it's my turn to try. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's actually very nice. I have a bit more. I need to be. I need to be strong. It's remarkable how little it seems to affect the coach. This is something they'll be used to. It's quite, it's quite congealed. So he's going to drink the whole thing. This binging on blood continues for three months as men race to pile on the pounds. Communities gather in a unique competition at which Bodhi women can assess potential husbands. The fattest and best dancers are considered the most eligible. Now, it's my turn to try. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's actually very nice. I have a bit more. I need to be. I need to be strong. <laughs> It's actually, um, genuinely, a strong, strong flavour, but sort of warm and very delicious. I'm hoping Babani will approve too. It's good. With the compound secure, the bunny seems more relaxed. But it seems she still thinks I've got a lot to learn. She's giving me a new and unexpected responsibility. Why is this one got a rope on it? Really, this, this one? one? I like, I like it. it, thank, thank you. you. Having my own bullock to look after is a huge honour. <laughs> this Bodhi naming ritual starts with milk being spat at even the biggest bones of their prey, allowing them to get at nutritious marrow. The resulting rich milk allows her cubs to develop their own bone-crunching teeth and jaws. In Bodhi country, cattle have replaced much of the local wildlife. So hyenas have little choice but to prey on livestock. At dusk, the cattle come in. Mabani's sons have been guarding them all day. But at night, when hyenas are most likely to attack, they need the protection of the corral. This your house? Mm. I like, I like it. it. Babani will sleep inside her house, but with her livestock within earshot. Babani picks out a cow skin, my bed for the night. Very nice. Oh, it matches my hair. In Bodhi culture, taking a stranger by the hand is normal. The bunny takes me to the centre of the village, where the men lie out all night on hyena watch. Thank you, Babani. 
My bed for the night. Yeah, great. It's worrying to sleep out in the open. Well, the noise. Not exactly quiet. Um, my bed for another. Here? We're getting on just fine. I think we'll be very happy together. It's nine o'clock at night. So that was the time that Babani said that Highness might come from the road. Next morning, the villagers are up at dawn. It sounds like a mess some hyena activity overnight, as Babani's daughter, Rigna, explains. There were hyena close to the village last night. Shameful I didn't hear a thing. Here. All her cows are safe. But Babani isn't happy. I offer to help reinforce her thorn fence. Baradi's daughter, Choma, comes along to make sure I do a good job. Lower this side. Hyenas are highly intelligent. They'll exploit any weak spots. Yeah. I'm hoping Babani will approve too. With the compound secure, the bunny seems more relaxed. But it seems she still thinks I've got a lot to learn. She's giving me a new and unexpected responsibility. Why is this one got a rope on it? Really, this one? I like it, thank you. Having my own bullet to look after is a huge honour. <laughs> this Bodhi naming ritual starts with milk being spat all over my face. I share the name with the, the cow. No longer Gordon, I am. With the ceremony over, I'm told to bond with my bullock as the Bodhi do. That's still, still, still warm. warm. The Bodhi rub their favourite cows and bulls with fresh dung as decoration. Yeah? So good. Ash works like a sunscreen and prevents infection from cuts and grazes. The biggest, most important role for me is to keep this bullet safe from hyenas. I'm realising that I'm up against quite an adversary. The hyenas, I've seen them in action before, and as strong as Onyamasa is, he's no match for a, for a hyena. They are yeah, incredibly strong, they're persistent, they're tenacious, and they know what they're after. In an area like this, this is just, this is perfect. A little cow like this, that's their dinner. 
We may now share the same name, but I've got a lot to learn if I'm going to keep Onyabasa safe. He's still in my coat. With a bullet of my own to look after, I'm keen to hear from Baradi and Elder Morgero just what hyenas are capable of. <laughs> that song sort of is a nod towards the behavior of a, of a hyena. They can go here, they can go there, they can take and take and take. Hyena and body have been enemies for a long time. Do you think that's going to be the same into the, the future? It's interesting to hear back that the time before the body raised cattle, hyenas and people were, were friends. Um, and that's true of hunter-gatherer societies. In the past, past hunter-gatherer hunter societies that exist now, they can coexist with big predators because there's no real conflict. conflict. The conflict only really comes is when we start animal husbandry, when we start keeping animals, the types of animals that predators will, will, will go for. That's how this, this story that's still playing out today, that's when, that's when it really started. The Bodhi's war with hyenas looks set to run and run. Morgera's stories help to dispel their reputation as scavengers. 70% of hyenas' food comes from kills they make themselves. When it comes to hunting, hyenas are more successful than lions. An adult can bring down prey over three times its size and travel up to 80 kilometers a day in search of food. Hyenas attack large animals by biting their vulnerable underbelly. A cow has little chance against a predator like this. That's what we've been waiting for, waiting for the cows to come home. It's just central to, to this way of life. life. Cattle, Cattle are everything. Cattle are the Bodhi's only wealth, used as payment in marriage and as collateral for loans. Everything that comes out of a cow finds a use. It's got a calf, clearly small calf, so I think this is the one we're gonna milk. Or we can wash a hand. Cow's urine has antibacterial properties, so it makes sense to use it for washing where water is so scarce. But every time I get close to the cow, it's getting a bit spooked and moving away. Is that part of the... Um, it's sort of soothing the calming, calming process, process, just rubbing its bum. I get the um, I get rubbing its side. That's sort of quite that's quite soothing. That's how I'd soothe the cow. I think kind of rubbing its bum must be specific bum hole. Um, I'm surprised. Bibani takes a handful of milk for an important ritual. Good lad, thank you. One. Her superstition reminds me that for the Bodhi, hyenas are a threat, not just to their cattle, but to their way of life. 